Well, uh, welcome to another edition of the Bones of Advertising. I do believe we are up to number five. I'm Craig McLeod, and of course you are. I'm still John Douglas. Still nice John Douglas. Still you know, John Douglas. I'm very happy that you haven't changed, my friend, and always good to see you on the uh, the video uh, again. So, um, without further ado, what have we got? Have we got a bone to pick today, JD? We've got a little, little bone to chew over today. I've got a um, I've had a uh, uh, I would like to chew over a very simple bone today, oh. and it plays into that whole thought of do. Does a brand or does a product need to be differentiated or does it just need to be distinct? Oh. And the bone I would like to chew today is the bone of perspective. <clears throat> we, talk about, <clears throat> we talk about a lot of uh, people wanting to be different. They want to be noticed. They want, to be, they want their product to be chosen. And the only way I think you can do that is actually to have a different perspective on how you approach the market. It can be in really small ways, it can be in really simple ways, but I think it re you really need to understand the power of taking a different perspective in order to set yourself apart from the competition. Right, I like so that. A little, it's a very, it's a very, uh, it's, got a, it's got a very long name. It's a very long and technical name for a bone, <laughs> but the bone that I would like to chew is the bone of perspective. Yes. So we're talking about we're talking about a femur today, as far as bones go. We're not talking about a little sort of finger bone. We're talking talking about a femur. A femur, yes, a very long, thin kind of ostrichy yeah. femur. Right, thing. I like that. And what I will say to start is, perspective reminds me of one of my favourite animated movies from Pixar, from Ratatouille, where yes. the critic, the big, tall, skinny fella. Paul yeah. turns up to the restaurant and he says, like this as well, he's got a very sort of poignant French sort of American accent. And he says, you ask the chef to serve me whatever he dares and I'll supply the perspective. <laughs> so but maybe you're going to supply the perspective today. Oh, I, well, I, I think there's something really, there's something kind of, Fascinating, about that. I love that movie though. I love the bit where, he's, oh, where he's on the, the rat is on the top of that guy, just you know, pulling his hair and telling him which. <laughs> <laughs> so good. But that whole that there is something really interesting about how customers view our advertising and communications and the brand itself is. We can only put out there what we believe is our best, and and they provide the perspective yeah right but if we provide something that's kind of new or interesting or unique or really connective then i think there's more likely that they will they will like it people like new stuff but we're afraid of it at the same time just because yeah. of the way our brains are wired exactly you know, we're, yeah. from from way back when we were little monkeys running around in the jungle we were like if it's new it's dangerous yeah and and so we're kind of attracted to new, but we don't want to be too new that it's... So yeah, what's exactly. a useful perspective for yeah. people to take? Like, for instance, I really like... We were talking the other day, you and I, as we do, and we were talking about sensory perceptions. Yeah, what about cues, of, which we love? Yeah, of brands. Sensory cues. that, are, And I was reminded, like, every time I go for... Like, so for Mother's Day or for um, uh, my day. wife's birthday... Yeah, birthdays, Christmas. <laughs> there will be at some stage during the year there will be a visit to go and find a new pair of pajamas. You know, silk pajamas, flannel pajamas, you know, cotton pajamas, whatever. New yep. pair of pajamas. Yep. So you know, the kids like giving it to her, and it's sort of a bit of a tradition. And we will always, always, always go to Peter Alexander. Yeah. Because yep. when you walk in there, there's this, they've got a scent. They use a scent. They use an aroma. Every, and they say that they, they change it every season, so there's just seasonality to it. Right. And it feels like a bedroom. Like yeah. it feels like, I mean, it's a bedroom, but it's a store, but you all feel like you're walking into someone's bedroom. Yeah. You know, like you feel like it's a it's a cosy place, there's a little warmth to it, it feels like there's a bit of snuggliness to it. I mean, and I know I know hardcore marketing rationalists, you know don't like when people say oh but it feels snuggly that's not rational but it's highly highly connective yeah absolutely everything doesn't yeah. have to be rational 
No, no, thank God, because otherwise I would I would not have a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Do you look at um, uh, you? You're an Apple fanboy. Right? Yeah, I love love Apple, and that, that's a a real good point. So if you look at if you look at Peter Alexander and their century experience, you basically feel like you're getting under the doona when you walk into the store. It's got that beautiful. <laughs> Sensory feeling, it does. Yeah, you're right. You and I are on exactly the same page, and I and I, I know the, the good lady Douglas. She she gets the pajamas now. The, the question before we go to Apple is that I think the kids choose and JD pays more than JD pays and or more than JD chooses and the kids pay. Yeah, that right? I, no, I think I think there is a there is a sense of um, uh, there's a. There's a there's a there's a very real sense that when they walk into a bedroom, it's like just walking into a bedroom, everything's free. Exactly. You know, it's a free bedroom. Yeah. Yes, I love that. So, My children are exactly the same, as you well know. But let's look at <laughs> Apple and their very very gallery or austere or clean environment that they create relative to Peter Peter Alexander. And and how do you see that from a perspective point of view, JD? I, I think you're right. I think the idea of it being a, a, a gallery, I think, is exactly correct. Like, if you go back to the origin of the birth of Apple, and it was simply a, a they understand the joy of design, and they understand the, the 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 reason for design is to find the function of something and make it more enjoyable to use. That's the idea of 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 design. Great design. Yep. So you think about, like, back in 1984, like, before anyone was born, back in 1984, when you, used to, when you got a desktop for the first time, a personal computer, like, not a personal computer, but desktop, yep. if it was PC, or, you know, Dell or IBM or, you know, Hewlett Packard or Texas Instruments or whatever it was, you would get a set of, like, a book about that thick and you mm-hmm. would have to... T- yeah, turn it on and there will be a manual where you have to go through and figure out, well, if I do this and then I queue in this and then I hit return. So you had to program the computer before you could use it. Right. Apple came along and they said, what about if you just turned it on and you could start using it? What? Like it's work. <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> imagine something so simple and so intuitive to use, you could just turn it on and use it. And that whole thing has taken the world by storm, but yeah, right. they really were the people that started it from an office management point of view, yeah. but from a computing point of view. So their whole, their whole design philosophy is about, these are works of art that you will want to use. So if we design them beautifully, you will want to use them because they're beautiful and you want to use beautiful things. More and creatively. So, sorry? More creatively, I think, was one of the points as well. Really important that, yep. yes, it's beautiful to look at, but it inspires you to be more creative because of what you're working on. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. And that's the whole think different thing. It's like yeah, right. you can express yourself. You can express yourself because it's your, it's, your, it's your interpretation of what beautiful is and function is and all of that. So this whole idea of it looking like a gallery walking in and there's this beautiful piece of art on a beautiful plinth that we celebrate the design because we celebrate the usability of it because we're celebrating you, the customer. And the all comes, Yeah, exactly. And it all comes down to, um, it all comes down to you, the customer. So that's why when you walk into Apple, they've got geniuses down the back yep. because you don't want to trust your computer just to any monkey. No. You know, you, you want to have a genius look at it. Yeah. So they've got this thing that says, I'm a genius, and they must be geniuses because it says so on their t-shirt. <laughs> the genius <laughs> bar. Like you're actually at a genius bar. You're sitting up on a stool, and you've got the genius who actually looks like a genius behind the counter. Indeed. Doing genius things so you feel like you've got people who know what they're doing, helping you fix your beautiful thing which you love more than anything else so that you can go and express yourself in some way again but it's 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 a it's a perception what's the perception of 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 the product when you walk into the apple store is like this is a work of art this is something beautiful i can't wait to get my hands on it so i can use it so i can express myself and i'll express myself better because it's so pretty yeah, because right. it's so beautiful, because it's so easy to use. So, you know, how do you, how do we as as businesses 
how do we then focus our, how, how do we use perspective to actually build businesses? And I, I think there's a really simple, there's a simple trick that we can, that we can do. So uh, Rory Sutherland, who I, I'm a big fan of, he's the global creative director of Ogilvy, but he's like, he's, a, he's given a whole lot of TED talks and yep. he's a uh, big rotund Englishman who swears a lot and, you know, smokes these cigarettes and, you know, it's just funny. The simplicity is brilliant though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's just amazing. Like, so he's got this, um, he's got this story he tells, I'll tell you this story and then I'll tell you how he did, how, how they get to it. It's really okay. bloody clear. Yeah. So there's this hotel in Stockholm, right? Yep. And business people, now you've gone overseas, you've traveled, you've been to hotels and like, how many hotel rooms do you remember? They all look the same. Like, you know, they all feel the same. There's nothing they've got. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes they'll smell new and they'll say, this room has been renovated and it cost us 500,000, you know, bucks to renovate it. And you go, well, you know, good for you. Fantastic. Right. But like, it makes no kind of visceral connection with me. I, like, I don't want to go and stay in it again because they spent $500,000 on it. It makes no difference to me. Yeah. But he's, he tells this delightful story about going to this hotel in Stockholm and he keeps going back there because when you go into the lift, there's this, you know, the lift, you, there's the buttons, but it's only when you look at the buttons to, you know, the lift buttons, it actually is not the, the floor you're going to because that's what the, the little key card has done. It's like garage, well, yeah, yeah, basement, garage, hip hop, blues, funk, soul. And it's like, what kind of music would you like to listen to? On your camera. <laughs> In the lift, yeah, in the lift, and it's like so. All of a sudden, it's like this has made this this rest this hotel memorable because it's something a little bit out of the ordinary, and it's enjoyable, and it really connects with something inside me as a tired guest or as a guest. Like it personalizes it for me. Like there's a whole lot of you know, of really interesting psychological things that you know they get triggered yeah. so much more and so much more connective than we've just spent five hundred thousand dollars upgrading the room like, it probably cost a couple of thousand bucks to put in so relative to the 500 grand re re renovating that room this yeah. small expense has that huge impact tiny tiny expense and that brings me to that's how he's done it like he's really clever yeah. He said, what you do is if you, if you have a, a simple four part, you know, graph, four quadrant thing, and on one axis, you have how much money needs to be spent and how much impact it has had. So how much you're spending, how much impact or, you know, however. In the top quadrant is the, this costs a lot of money and it has a lot of impact. And that, there will always be stuff like that in every business. And that's unfortunately for a lot of businesses, that's the default we go to when we think we need to have a lot of impact and we automatically assume that it's therefore going to cost a lot of money to come up with the impact. But lots of money, lots of impact. That can happen. It does happen. That's what strategy is all about, you know, business strategy and goals and all. And then there's stuff that costs a lot of money and has very little impact. And, uh, you know, we've all had failures. We've all, we've, we've all slipped with a banana skin at some stage. Yep. There's, you know, there's stuff we do that costs a lot and has very little impact. And it's just the cost of doing business. Then there's stuff that is like, has low impact and doesn't cost a lot of money. Yep. And that's like, you know, do, do we use Faber-Castell pencils or do we use, you know, big biros? It's like, yeah, doesn't really matter. Yeah, no, so it's like trivial, but it's kind of that's that's that that quadrant. And then there is this quadrant which like, doesn't cost a lot, but it has a massive impact. And that's the stuff where you need to kind of take a step back and you go, how does this tiny tiny thing help give help provide massive amount of impact on what we're doing? Yeah. And that's the stuff that we don't spend a lot of time on but it would have an incredibly like a, like disproportionate amount of impact and value to a, to a business. And it's the, it's the stuff that we overlook because we're so busy looking for the big home run. Let's just spend a truckload of money on this. Like 
he has uh, Rory Sutherland again, and I'm you know I'm, I'm using that because that's that was part of my research. I did some research for this meeting. I did. I promise oh. you, I did. I did. <laughs> I watched a lot of videos. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I like it. But he says this this delightful thing, like when they when we're looking at the Eurostar, you know, the train that runs from Paris to London, they spent six million dollars, I think, making it faster, or six billion, just some a massive amount of money. Yeah. Making making it go making it forty minutes faster to go from Paris to London or London to Paris. Because people were complaining how slow the journey was. And that then became the framework that you looked in to judge what the answer should be. The journey's too slow, therefore we've got to make it quicker. But in actual fact, what they should have done was the journey seems slow. Why does the journey seem slow? Because it's not enjoyable enough. If you had the world's top supermodels walking up and down, handing out free bottles of Krug champagne, you'd demand the train was slowed down. Yeah. Like, like it's all percept it's perception. Yeah. What what's the real issue? Underlying. Not What's the underlying issue, and how can I connect? How can I connect on a very visceral level with the customer? That's what I think we should be looking at. Yeah, absolutely. And if you put that into relative terms for some of our clients of today, that really could be a way to look at how they can spend more effort on trying to engage the current customers they have, and maybe increase share of wallet. So perspective yes. could be that we try and increase share of wallet from our current customers rather than trying to come up with the big campaign and the big idea of bringing in the new customer. Yes, yes, yes. Like you've got people who like you already. <laughs> yeah. How, how can we charm them a little into bit more? Wanting... Yeah, just a little bit more. Yeah. So you go back to the lift example with the music. It's repeat purchase. Like, how many times do you go on a on a on a go on an international business trip? How many times did they before the whole virus thing hit? But you know, and and how many hotels did they have a choice of staying at? And once they find something they like, they're more likely to go back and repeat the purchase again and again and again. I reckon if that hotel in Stockholm sent an email to Rory that said. We've updated the playlist in the lift. Yes. It would tickle him inside out. He would be beside himself with, I can't wait to get back. Like they've just got oh, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you would. It's just a, what, did, what are the things that really identify the pain points of customers? And it may not be something big. It yes. may not be something that needs a lot of money thrown at it. But it's something that if if we can if we can just if we can connect with them and a little one percent is a little half a percent better yeah. can have if it can have a you know if a half a percent better makes it five percent more profitable that's money well spent I well, think that's what stays over in the low cost high impact and that's again the the point of the exercise of perspective if if you can sometimes think it doesn't have to cost big money. That's really the key to it. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Just all, all you need to, I think, all you need to go in there with is how does, how does this help connect with the customer? Yeah. Where's the charm in this? Where's the smile in this? Where's the human element to this? Like, it's not about making a train go faster. It's about making a journey more enjoyable. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, how does like if you're selling if you're selling chocolate bars, it's not about saying we're twenty percent more chocolatey. It's about reminding people about how they feel every time they bite into one of your chocolate bars. Yeah, well, remember yeah. the old the old one as well, JD. That I can't remember who it was, but they printed on the inside of the wrapper. So when you yeah. opened up and enjoyed the chocolate, there was this little Easter egg or this little delight on the inside. There was like a joke or a, you know, or something. Yeah. So that's the little things that can make it better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like fantails. Remember, like they just, it was just, it was something they just kept you guessing and yeah. kept you eating and made you want to buy more. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, my friend, that's a, uh, that's a great bit of perspective and um, could be a great way for us to wrap on, on EP5. 
I think I think it's it one two three four five. <laughs> it's a um, it's a, a it's a yeah, it's a simple thing, and I I think it's worth kind of you know exploring as people go about their week. You know, just something to take with them. Absolutely, it's well, our gift to them. Thank you for your uh, fresh perspective. <laughs> thank you for yours. You're looking very well. Speaking of perspectives, you look like you've um, you don't have a COVID cut anymore. No, I must say, mate, I dropped into my barber, who is an absolute legend of a man, and uh, he buzzed me in about 25 seconds. It wasn't 20 minutes longer. It was so quick. I was done in no time. Yeah. Buzz, 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 out the door. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely Fantastic. Fabulous. All right. Well, you have yourself a great weekend, my friend, and uh, you too. You too. look forward to next week. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. Take care.